Hi everyone, I'm Ben, and this is the Board Game Blueprint. On this week's episode, Patrick McNeeple McNeil is going to show us how he designed his 18 card card game hook box that was entered into the recent challenge by uh, Concrete Canoe Games. In it, he's going to talk a little bit about how to lay things out, how to know what's kind of the front and what's the back, and hopefully give us a couple inside uh, insights into what you can do to best direct the readers when going through the container that it doubles as a rule book. Hey there, my name is Patrick McNeil and I'm the designer of a little card game called Shields Up. It's a little 18 card game that uses um, the hook box. I originally designed this as a part of the Game Crafter hook box challenge and um, it went on to be picked up by a small publisher and actually distributed on Kickstarter. Um, so recently Ben asked me if I could just talk through some of the packaging um, type decisions in particular that I made. So basically just uh, talk about the packaging, how the text got laid out, and kind of some of the considerations that went into that. And so that's what I'm going to do here today. Um, so you can see here I've got Photoshop open and this is of course the um, the document uh, for the cover of the box and um, you know of course I can turn the template on and off and when you print it you know don't print the template there um, but uh, you know just some uh, details we'll look at here to see kind of what goes into this so you can see the template there with um, you know the red cut line and then the um, the bleed safe zones and whatnot and so basically everything in this case um, between you know, like in all their other templates, between the red line and the blue dotted line is sort of a, I don't know what you call a danger zone, I guess. So here up here at the edges, it's at risk of getting cut off because um, the, the printing might actually drift a little bit. And so that red cut line can bleed in as far in as that, um, that blue dotted line. So, you know, that's just something you have to always be careful of. You always have to stay inside those blue dotted lines. In this case, you actually have folds as well. So these green lines are folds. Um, and it gets real tempting to actually place text across them and just like, ah, oh, well, you know, it'll be okay. But when you see the actual print, you can see how the folds work and especially over time how they wear. So it's a really bad idea to put text directly on the folds. And I guess you might be able to squeeze something into this little space here. I, I had kind of thought about putting shields up um, here so you could see it from the edge, but the packaging is so darn small. It just, it's not really necessary. And so you can see, um, there's like four panels basically to work with here. Um, you know, and you figure this out real quick that, uh, you know, these side panels here, when they, they're folded around behind, um, they'll be oriented one way while the top ones, they fold over. So you kind of, you have to decide sort of which side's up, if you will. Um, and you can kind of see what I did. I made the side panels match the cover, but then the text up here on the top panel, because this is gonna be kind of folded back and it'll be displayed upside down essentially so you can see I put it upside down and the same thing down here on the bottom because this is going to get folded up. The other thing to keep in mind is that top flap um, is actually going to cover up the bottom half of this uh, particular piece right here so you gotta kind of think that through and realize what's going to be covered up, what's going to be visible, that sort of thing uh, so you can kind of decide what you want visible. So in this case if you think about it this little chunk right here is the bottom half of the back of the box and this little chunk here is the top half of the back of the box. So together, those two make up the entire um, back of your box. And this is a little, the design here is a little different than the final printed version I'll show you, but uh, this was the last version of the file I had before the uh, publisher um, took charge of things. So it's pretty close to the right thing. So one thing I wanna uh, sort of zoom in on here is you'll see this, uh, this right here is the cut where the hook is actually going to poke through the box and that's how it holds itself closed. And so you typically don't really want text inside of there. I kind of cheated a little bit on this, um, but it's worked out so far in every print that I've seen of the game, it hasn't been a problem. So I'll show you exactly what I mean um, on that when we look at the other side. So yeah, so that's the uh, front side. On the inside, of course, uh, since it opens up and folds flat, you know, you can put all of your text in the same orientation. Um, and you know, I know there's templates out on the internet for sort of rule books and sort of the order that the content should be in. And it's real tempting to follow that, like, 
you know, introduction, overview, components, and that sort of thing. Um, but as it turns out, you know, this is a pretty tight amount of space, so you have to really uh, be aware of how you use it. And so you can see on these outside flaps that are kind of covered up, um, I have the overview, the introduction, and the component list. So I put those there just because, I don't know, I view those as supporting elements. They're not necessarily the heart of the game, and a lot of people overlook them because of the way it unfolds. So you kind of got to be aware of how people are going to use it. I found that these two flaps are probably the least noticed um, of the entire package. So that's something to think about. So if we zoom in a little bit, um, you can see, of course, the template, right, with the, um, the red cut lines and the blue uh, sort of indicator of the safe zone. And again, there's those folds. And you can see here how I set my text to very carefully avoid these green lines. Um, and you can see I really actually was pushing the boundaries a little bit on this blue and that's maybe a little risky but I figured there's not going to be a cut here uh, at worst case there would be a fold there and uh, but their tolerances don't seem to be that far off so um, that hasn't been a problem again in any of the prints that I've seen um, you can see here I'm kind of pushing the boundaries man this uh, this weird shape makes it really hard to have sort of your typical box of text um, so anyway, that's one of the ways I dealt with it and, you know, in hindsight, I could have centered the text for the title. That would have been a great way to uh, sort of avert that problem. Um, and then, as I mentioned on the other side, down here, you can see this cut right here. And uh, I did work that into this sort of white space. But, of course, you can see I've got text going right into this um, sort of unsafe zone, if you will. So it is possible that that text gets cut. Um, I have yet to see a copy that does that, but um, it's probably just a matter of time. So that's a little bit of a risk uh, that I took. I don't know that I would uh, recommend that, but uh, you know, don't have the text totally blast through there. I felt, I don't know, I felt like it was a risk worth taking. The text will still be there, it just might have a cut through it. So it's unfortunate, but uh, I could have easily adjusted some of my spacing here probably to sort of accommodate for that, but uh, I didn't. Um, so that's the main thing about the text um, fitting. One thing I should point out, the great thing about this packaging, this whole thing will print on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So you can like print this sucker out and see how it's gonna work. And I did that quite a bit because I really wanted to get the type size down as far as possible. And so that's how I got, you know, came to this uh, font size here is just through testing it. I printed off a whole bunch of copies until I figured out, well, what what is the smallest I can make it and have it still be uh, somewhat readable? And, um, you know, I have fairly old eyes with, uh, I don't want to admit it, but bifocals. So being able to read this, you know, I, I felt like I was a fair, fairly decent uh, test case for actually being able to read this sucker. So um, in terms of typeface, I always use Helvetica New. It's just because it's a set that I've had for a really long time and I use it for all kinds of things. And in particular for small text like this, it works really well. Um, and they have these nice condensed heavy fonts that you see uh, on my titles here. One of the things I've seen other people do is, because this is kind of dead space here, rather than put the titles on their own line, um, pull the, the text up so that it's on the same line and the title is just sort of an introduction to that line, if you will. Um, that's something I've seen some people do that saves some extra space. And, and looking at this, you know, you start to see all this white space and you're like, hey, um, you know, that's space I could use because when you get down to uh, this size of a package, every word matters and it gets really, really, really tight. And here's that uh, card layout. I'm always a fan of showing what the, the layout of the actual game should be because I just think that helps really communicate things. So that was a big part of this for me. Um, in terms of how I did this in Photoshop, this whole thing is like uh, uses the uh, place um, linked so that as I update those images for those uh, cards they'll update here inside of uh, Photoshop at least if you tell it to update on the layers that's a, a nice little trick there um, and then the same thing over here like this is just a card that's or an image that's placed through a linked file so that if I actually update the card itself I just come in here and the um, I can tell that layer to update and it pulls in the latest card so I don't have to keep sort of replacing it if you will Yeah, so you can see right here, I mean, I'm pretty sure, I don't think this worked out this perfectly, 
uh, to fit that sort of triangle there uh, by happenstance. Um, I scrubbed the words a lot to get things as, you know, as condensed as possible in terms of the language. So, you know, all the extra uh, supportive decorative text was sort of removed and it was really boiled down to the nuts and bolts. But, um, you know, I still paid careful attention to try to, like you can see, this just sort of in this paragraph here ends real nicely, right? Um, and that's not, again, by accident. That was uh, a lot of intentional effort to get that type to set just perfectly so we don't end up with, you know, a line of text with just one word on it or something silly like that. Uh, over here you can see I got a, you know, a little bit on each of these, but that's not too bad. And even getting these uh, bullet points here for the types of actions you can take to all fit um, each one on their own line. Man, I, I worked on that text for a long time to try to get that condensed down to uh, to fit in there. So, you know, it's not the most uh, beautiful design, I guess, but uh, it's uh, really functional. Um, I haven't had anybody have any problems reading it, and I think that's been a really important factor. Um, yeah, and so those are the, the main points about uh, the uh, box for um, uh, Shields Up, which uses uh, the Game Crafters uh, hook box design. So I don't know if you're a fan of that design, but I think it's pretty slick, and uh, it's actually pretty easy to work with. And again, being able to just print it off on your computer and sort of see what it's going to look like is actually really, really helpful, because then you can verify the font size and that type of thing. Um, you know, obviously the color shift in terms of things getting darker is a big factor too, and you'll notice that here the, uh, you know, this pink or purple is really quite bright, but in the finished product it's it's, it's quite a bit darker. Um, it makes a big difference there, but uh, yeah, so those are the main considerations when putting this together. Um, probably the most work of all went into just scrubbing this text on the back to get everything to sort of align and to fit just right. And it takes uh, quite a bit of work to get the text down to the point where it still makes sense. It satisfies all the needs in terms of what it says, but it still actually um, um, makes sense, right? Not to mention fits on the, the page. So yeah, so that shields up. Uh, hope you uh, get something useful out of this video. And uh, up next, I'll go ahead and show you the actual printed product so you can see sort of how that turned out on the flip side. And uh, much appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, check this video out. All right, so uh, let's take a look at the uh, the real thing here. This is a printed copy. And actually, you'll notice maybe the artwork and the design's slightly different. And that's just because uh, the published version, I guess, um, the publisher made a few changes to the design, which is fine. Um, let me go ahead and cut the seal without killing myself. Anyway, this is actually the first one I've opened up. I've kind of been hesitant to open up one. Um, so anyway, so you can see um, there's the design. Of course, uh, you can see you can read the text. Uh, top to bottom like you would expect on the back side which isn't really that big of a detail except uh, when you're putting the file together you may miss that part I'm just open this darn thing up it's always tricky to open these hook boxes when you first get them so there we go yeah there we are alright so popped it open and so now you can see when we open this up, of course, um, the bottom flap and the top flap are upside down, right? And uh, one of the things you notice here um, is how um, there's text hidden underneath the flap, right? So that's something you can do. You have text here on the back side, and again, uh, that uh, that little the little crack where the um, the little hook slides in just tells you which part's going to be hidden. And um, so some of the text is there behind that. And we can open it up. I'm not really going to look at the card so much, but uh, if you lay it flat, you can see, um, you know, you can see how the sides are straight up and uh, they miss the folds, right? Like it's all well within the uh, tolerances for uh, the printing. And the same thing down here, everything's well within that. Um, if we look at the inside, Again, you can see where these folds are, and you can see how we avoided putting text across those seams. And uh, you can real clearly see now how that would have uh, really hindered uh, being able to read the text, especially because you kind of have to make some of the text pretty small just to get it to fit inside of here. 
Um, in particular, you'll see down here, um, one of my most satisfying parts of the text inside of here is how I got this uh, nice white space here to actually align with, yeah, I don't know if you can see it very well, but uh, the crack or the cut where the, uh, the hook actually goes through. So, you know, it just lined up perfectly and that just took some finagling of the text and deciding what went where. For example, I don't know that I would actually have put things maybe in the order that I, that I have them. I might have wanted the introduction and the components maybe to be more on this side, but uh, it was a matter of getting things to fit. And so I settled in on, uh, you know, kind of a top to bottom here in the middle set up to gameplay to uh, talk you through all that. And then the side flaps being more supportive elements. This one, you know, describing the cards and stuff as well as the end game. And then this side just, uh, I, I kind of insist in my rules on showing what the like sort of physical layout should be. So I feel like that just really helps people understand it. Um, so that's my my visual over there. And um, you know, the text is fairly small. Fortunately, uh, the typeface displays pretty well at a small size, but um, yeah, so you can see you run right up against the tolerances to get things just inside of the those spaces around there. Um, yeah, so that's the, that's the real deal. Um, I hope this was uh, helpful. Now, I've dabbled in graphic design a little bit, but McMeeple is a professional and he knows exactly what he's doing. I hope you got to learn a couple new things about what we can do uh, as designers to steer, you know, the gamers, the readers, to better learn and understand where to expect how things are broken down with this particular hook box. If you have any innovative uses for an 18 card hook box, maybe as a component in the game, please let us know in the comments below about what that might be. If you liked this episode, like and subscribe button. And of course, if you're part of the GameCraft community and would love to submit some kind of video, let me know, send us an email, send us a comment, and we'll get in touch with you. I'm Ben, this has been another episode of the Board Game Blueprint, and together, let's build something great.